American car culture has been around so long, it is hard to imagine this country without it. But it may have peaked. Even with the recent drop in gasoline prices, Americans are driving less than they did a decade ago before the recession. Plus, we don't own as many cars as we used to. In just five years, from 2006 to 2011, the number of vehicles owned per driver fell marginally. Let's learn more from Tim Fernholz, reporter for the online daily magazine Quartz. Tim, good morning. Good morning. What's happening here exactly? Why are people driving less? Uh, well, the culture is changing. Uh, a big reason is urbanization. More Americans live in cities now than used to. Two-thirds of millennials, young Americans, live in cities, and they just don't need cars as much as they used to. It's a big reason for it. What fascinated me also about the research is the change in culture amongst younger people. I remember getting my license. The opportunity to get it was such a big deal, and now it seems like this age group is less interested. It's not the rite of passage it used to be. I think one striking fact is that in 1983, 80% of 18-year-old Americans had a driver's license. In 2010, it was down to 60%. And I think it's, it's going to be going down going forward. You know, nowadays, when people want to get away from their parents, they don't go to the mall or the drive-in. They go to the Internet. They're on social media. Uh, they're on their mobile phone. And they, there's less sort of technological cachet that comes, you know, with having the latest car. You know, you want the latest phone. Mm -hmm. it, car sales themselves have, are not falling. They're actually rising still. But, I mean, uh, is this something that the automakers are worried about? Uh, it is. You're right. Uh, car sales are up since the recession. They're going to sell maybe 17 million cars in the U.S. this year, so it's certainly not the end of the world. But they are concerned about it. If you look at Ford or any of the big American car makers, they're integrating more technology into their cars to try and make them more appealing to millennials. They're doing partnerships with companies like Zipcar or Uber, mm -hmm. uh, companies that are maybe going to be the bleeding edge of how cars are used in the U.S. going forward. Talk about the role of smartphones, because of all the things that smartphones have done, I I would have never thought that these two things could have been connected. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one is just you can communicate. You know, you don't need to make as many trips to see people. Um, and it's also, you know, like Uber, a uh, car service where if you want a car, you can summon one with your phone. Be there in two minutes, get in it, drive away. Or even Maybe here in New York, it's like real-time transportation. You can yeah. track when the bus is coming. Yeah, that's a big part of it, too. You can see the subway. It makes mass transit a little more individual, a little more accessible right. to people. You see this trend accelerating? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so there are people who are less bearish about the end of demand in cars who think maybe, you know, after the recession, we're going to see people getting richer. Millennials are going to leave their parents' households. They're going to have kids. They're going to get married. They're going to not want to live in cities anymore. They move out to the suburbs, right. maybe more cars there. I think a lot of automakers are thinking about emerging markets now, looking at China and India, places where the density of car ownership is much lower than in the U.S., but it's the same story there. There's a lot of congestion in cities, and they're looking at mass transit. All right, Tim Fernholz, thanks so much for being with us this morning.